Hey everybody, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk about acute infectious diarrhea, focusing more so on the watery type of diarrhea. So let's get started. First up, we have norovirus. This is a virus that demonstrates seasonal variability with infections being highest in the winter months. Now this can be transmitted by contaminated food, water, fomites, uh, fecal orally, as well as via airborne droplets. Now the incubation period for this is relatively short, lasting anywhere from one to two days before patients will become symptomatic after exposure. So some of the common signs and symptoms you want to keep an eye out for. First and foremost, nausea, non-bloody and non-bilious vomiting, which is the prominent symptom, watery, non-bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, myalgias, fever, and headache. So kind of like a, a lot of flu symptoms in addition to, to the diarrhea. Now, there are several locations uh, notorious for norovirus outbreaks. So on the exam, I want you to pay really close attention if they include schools or daycares, cruise ships, or if you dined out somewhere new. These can all be telltale signs that they want you to think of norovirus. Now, the diagnosis here is going to be made clinically based on clinical suspicion, and treatment is with supportive care, which essentially requires rest uh, as well as fluid hydration until the virus just has a chance to uh, make its way through the system. Next up, we have rotavirus, the enteric adenovirus, and astrovirus. Now, peak transmission for these viruses is, is, the, is in the winter and spring months, and the virus is transmitted via contaminated food as well as water. The incubation period for this is anywhere from 10 to 72 hours, and the patient populations that you're going to see this most frequently in are children and those who have immune system compromise. Now, symptoms include watery diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, fever, anorexia, headache, and myalgias. Now, these viruses are also diagnosed based on clinical symptoms, and the treatment here is also going to be supportive. Next up, we have the uh, enterotoxigenic E. coli, E-T-E-C. This is transmitted via fecal uh, contamination of either food or water, and certain risk factors uh, for the infection uh, uh, with uh, E-T-E-C include recent travel to uh, resource-limited areas, as well as travel on cruise ships. Now, the incubation period for this is anywhere between one and three days, and symptoms include, of course, watery diarrhea, nausea that doesn't typically usually include vomiting, with symptoms lasting anywhere from one through five days. Now, the diagnosis can be made here with DNA probes to identify toxin genes, and treatment is going to be via supportive care. Next up, we have Clostridium perfringens. This carries out its pathogenic effect via a toxin, and transmission occurs with the ingestion of contaminated food mainly meat and poultry, and is most frequently encountered in restaurants or when catering services have been used. Now, the spores associated with this uh, organism can withstand cooking temperatures and can proliferate when food is improperly stored. Now, the incubation period here is anywhere from 6 to 24 hours, and your symptoms are going to include watery diarrhea and, and abdominal cramping. Symptoms here will typically resolve within 24 to 48 hours, and the definitive diagnosis can be made with a positive stool culture. And the treatment, once again, is going to be with supportive care. All right, next up, we have C. difficile. This is a common hospital-acquired infection. And the risk factors that are associated with the development of C. difficile are going to include recent antibiotic use, a very important finding in a vignette, particularly if it was clindamycin, uh, fluoroquinolones, or cephalosporins. Uh, additionally, recent hospitalization or living in a long-term uh, healthcare facility or rehab facility, these are all risk factors. This also means those who are 65 years of age or older are at greater risk because those are the people who are oftentimes living in facilities like this. Um, and one final risk factor would be anyone who's using a proton pump inhibitor. Now, symptoms are going to include three or more episodes of watery diarrhea in a 24-hour period, as well as pain and cramping in the lower abdomen, uh, nausea, fever, and anorexia. Now, in severe cases, patients can develop fulminant colitis with septic shock, ileus, megacolon, a white blood cell count over 15,000 cells per milliliter, elevated creatinine of 1.5 milligrams per deciliter or higher, uh, hypovolemia, lactic acidosis, and hypoalbuminemia. Now, patients oftentimes have frequent recurrences of this disease, even after treatment. And if the patient has one recurring episode, they're also far more likely to have repeated ones. Now, the diagnosis can be made here with a nucleic acid amplification test for C. difficile toxin B gene or a stool test for the C. difficile toxin. 
Treatment for non-severe disease is with oral vancomycin or fidaxomycin. For severe cases, however, we're going to treat our patient with oral vancomycin and determine if surgery might be indicated. For those patients experiencing recurrent diseases, you want to treat the first two episodes with oral vancomycin, but then we're going to treat the third and any subsequent recurrences with a fecal microbiota transplantation. Next up, we have Giardia. This is transmitted, of course, via contaminated water, food, or via fecal oral transmission. And patients who are at risk here include those who are recently camping in the wilderness, uh, children in daycare centers, as well as recent swimming pool use. Now, the incubation period is quite long for this. It can be anywhere between 7 and 14 days, which really makes this different from the rest that we've discussed, which happen in typically within a day or two. Now, symptoms that you want to watch out for for are going to include watery diarrhea or steatorrhea, abdominal cramps and or bloating, flatulence, nausea, and vomiting. Now, the diagnosis is made here via nucleic acid detection assays, antigen detection assays, and stool microscopy. Patients should also receive treatment here and not just supportive care. Um, classically, uh, metronidazole can use uh, tenidazole or nitazoxanide. All right, next up we have uh, Cryptosporidium parvum. This is transmitted via contaminated water, uh, swimming pool water, vegetables, fruit, unpasteurized milk, person-to-person -person contact, as well as animal exposure. And the incubation period here is really, really, really varying. It can happen anywhere from two all the way up to 28 days. This means that this long period of time is not going to likely be helpful as a factor in the vignette because one person might get it after two days, one after a month, and that doesn't really help you narrow anything down. So keep that in mind. And this infection, another thing that is helpful though, is that this is typically limited to people who are immunocompromised. So patients with HIV infections, uh, organ transplant recipients, people with inherited immune deficiencies. So while it might be hard based on time frames, that will help you narrow it down. So if someone's not immunocompromised, chances are it probably isn't this. Now, some symptoms you want to look out for include watery diarrhea, cramping abdominal pain, nausea, anorexia, and fever. So nothing really out of the ordinary from all the other types. Now, the diagnosis here can be made with direct immunofluorescent antibody testing, uh, with PCR testing, as well as with enzyme immunoassays. And treatment includes improving the patient's immune function. So depending on how they've come to be immunocompromised, uh, this could be uh, treatment like antiretroviral therapy if they have HIV or reducing immunosuppression doses in organ transplant patients. Whatever we can do, we'll try and do it. Uh, patients should also be treated and uh, the medication we will give them in this instance is nitazoxanide. All right, the last condition here is Listeria monocytogenes. Transmission here occurs with the consumption of contaminated cold cut meats, hot dogs, soft cheeses, pates, or fruits. Um, so patients who are at risk of Listeria infection are typically in going to include pregnancy, so pregnant patients, neonates, uh, the immunosuppressed, uh, the elderly. And in these patients, there's an elevated risk for serious invasive disease, not just gastroenteritis. So that's really important to keep in mind. Now, your incubation period here uh, can be anywhere from six hours to 10 days. Typically, on average, you'll see this around 24 hours. So that's something important to keep in mind. Very varying, though. You know, it could be a big time frame. Now, symptoms of febrile gastroenteritis are going to include fever, watery diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, headache, myalgias and arthralgias, with symptoms lasting two days or less. Now, this diagnosis is usually clinical, although listeria can be cultured on selective media. Now, treatment is going to be, for the gastroenteritis, supportive care alone. But for patients who have bloodstream infections and invasive cases require antibiotics, which for which we can use things like ampicillin, or we can use penicillin with gentamicin. Additionally, if the patient is immunosuppressed, we can have their immunosuppressive drugs temporarily lowered to help fight infection. But this, again, only is necessary if in a case of the invasive form of the disease. All right, well, let's do some content review questions. Here's your first question. I will put 20 seconds on the clock, figure this one out, and then come on back. Correct answer here is A, oral vancomycin. Next question, I'll give you 20 seconds. If you need a little more time, hit that pause button, figure this one out, and then come on back.
correct answer here is B. And let's do one more question. I will give you 20 seconds, but if you need more time, go ahead and hit that pause button and then come on back. Correct answer here is D. All right, that is the end of our first lecture. I will see you in the next one.